Deep in the heart of the spider wood is the ruins of this ancient temple, and I tried to replicate it in real life. For those of you keeping track at home, this is area AR3000 in Baldur's Gate 1, and there's some ambiguous dark goings on here. Let's go to the gameplay and check that out before I show you how I built it. And spoilers, it's Red Wizards of Thay. Which Edwin actually is, so if he's in your party, you gotta remove him, otherwise this ends up being a friendly encounter. But when you stumble across these runes, Denak greets you. So sad to have met you this fine day, normally we'd be ecstatic to have visitors, but we really do desire privacy, blah blah blah. That is why you must die, of course. Whatever. I saw the movie. We're not scared of a bunch of posturing red robe freaks. And he does some more monologuing, arrogant whelps, blah blah blah, this will be a reward. Your death will be all the more sweet. Then we fight. It's a simple but beautiful little set piece to do a battle in. And later on, some giant spiders show up. I don't know if they're conjured or if they get pulled out of the woods by my charmed party members who wander off. But anyway, I threw some of those in the final diorama as well. Turns out there's four of them. Four red wizards doing who knows what. They never say. But they're not terribly difficult, so down they go, and then that's really all there is to do here. But I like the colors, and that's why I built it. So let me show you how in just a moment. And remember, if you're a 3D printer, you must check out Heroes Horde and their outstanding selection of models for your tabletop gaming, including the original True Tiles lines. Now to begin with, this thing is really nothing more than a box. I could use foam or a box, but I guess for strength or just because I was sort of in the mood to, I worked with cardboard. So the guts of it is just a lattice of double corrugated, and the outside is clad with graphics medium chipboard. This is the very thick cardstock you find at the back of a legal pad, but you can buy it in bulk like I do if you want. There's links in the video description below. Anyway, all this is just assembled with hot glue, because I'm generally very impatient. The stairs is just a set of descending size double corrugated slabs, with the corrugation covered by more chipboard. It is, quite literally, what it looks like. Nothing more. Well, let's get one more look at the source image here. I'm going to reproduce the colors. I began with this antique parchment, solid base coat over the entire thing. Then, with a plain black, a very light dry brush going only across the short direction, getting some faint black streaking. From there, like so many Baldur's Gate textures, it's just a matter of splotchifying it up. So I've got a medium gray acrylic paint, and in checking some of the colors I see on here, I got some inks that match those. This part was just a lot of experimentation with everything wet, slathering on some watered down gray paint and wet blending in some of the inks. It took a little while to find the right consistencies that didn't puddle up or run together, and I did find that using matte medium in the mix helps to keep it staying in place, which for these flat surfaces is what I want. But yeah, this took about a half hour of going back and reworking, dabbing things off with some paper towel, adjusting colors by putting in a drop of brown or black. These reds, for example, were a little bit magenta. In the image, I think it's dried blood. Here it is after those color splotches are done, and the whole thing is a bit too contrasty, so I washed the entire thing down again with some more watered-down gray. Now, while that was drying, I decided to set about making these broken columns. I started with some common one-inch miniature bases, the kind that have a taper to them. And for the body of the column, I used my thick, full-sized glue sticks, along with this corrugated paper. I've stopped collecting cardboard boxes that are made of corrugated cardboard and peeling the paper off one side, because it just takes forever. I dropped like eight bucks on this packet of lifetime supply of corrugated paper. So much easier. Worth the money. Anyways, with a bit of hot glue, I secure that wrapped around the glue stick. And to get a nice destroyed, ruined end, I just took my large wire snips and chopped it at an angle. Nice. And after a coat of spray primer and a base coat of that same parchment color, these also get washed with a gray. Again, bunch of experimentation, couple coats till it sort of looked like it matched the image. Easy enough, and these were all hot glued to the pedestal itself. There's one other feature here. There's a bowl of what appears to be holy water, maybe, on a pedestal. And this cabicon right here is just about the right size. I think I said that word correctly. I had also tried it by attaching this bead, but I later tore it off. I didn't like it. It was too tall. So I just airbrushed a light polished gold color on it, and then a muted blue on top to match the source image. Here's some clumps of miniature flowers that I found on Amazon. They appear to be the right colors compared to the source image. 
and I used almost all of these to just try and reproduce some of the trails that I see on there. Not exactly, but near enough. You know, near enough. This was the funnest step by far. I love gluing down fake foliage. Instant reward. Although these didn't have any orange ones, so I tried some watered down orange paint, just nicking at the white flowers, and it took the paint very well. Tinted it orange. I imagine you could do this with any color. In fact, that gave me an idea for an upcoming video where we tackle the Baldur's Gate tree style. It appears to be autumn in Baldur's Gate 1. There's trees of all colors, and I think with a simple airbrush, you can... Uh, I'm digressing. We'll cover that in a future video. Anyway, got our four red wizards of Thay. Gotta have those. I found this miniature on myminifactory.com. Link is in the video description below. Printed it, painted it with Army Painter Speed Paints, and with that, let's go to the field. You know what? It doesn't always need to be epic. I don't know about you, but I easily get overwhelmed with the sheer amount of ideas going through my head. And oftentimes it becomes paralyzing. It's a good idea to step back and let those things come to you. In the meantime, find simple things to do, like this. This right here is at least 45 minutes to an hour of entertainment at the table during a session. And I can only show you so many angles of it, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to keep it concise. Buy my D&D modules if you want to, or there's Patreon or Amazon affiliate links, whatever. But please subscribe and click the reminder bell, even though the reminder bell doesn't work. And find us on Facebook, the Tabletop Crafters Guild. Over 44,000 other people making stuff just like this for their tabletop miniature gaming. Thanks so much for watching today. I'm Wylock. Make things and play games. Thank you.